Hello, happy people. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. Today, I'm recording in my office at church. It's been a busy day, a full day. It's just a lot of great ministry stuff going on. And so I find myself at church, and I'm going to make the recording here tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk about the scandal of denial. The scandal of denial. The scandal of denying Jesus Christ. <clears throat> as your Lord and Savior. And we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 11. So I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 11. We're focused on verses 2 and 3. Matthew 11 is a very interesting passage. This is where uh, John the Baptist has been imprisoned. Uh, his disciples come to Jesus and want to know, is Jesus the one or should they look for another? And this is something I think we can all certainly relate to on some levels because I'm sh quite sure that all of us have at times had our doubts about Jesus. And, um, and so it's very instructive, uh, it's very helpful to look at how does Jesus respond, how does Jesus answer, and also then, you know, the, the mission question, the missiological question for us today, should we be presenting the gospel to people? Because would people maybe be better off if we didn't present the gospel? Because then that way they could stand before God on Judgment Day and say, I never heard the gospel, so how can you judge me wrongly? We're going to get into it. Um, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your patience, your long suffering. Uh, we thank you for giving us the gift of faith and for growing us in this faith. Father, bless us now as we look at the disciples of John the Baptist, the words of our Savior Jesus, and we study from the Gospel of Matthew. Plant the word deep in our hearts and minds. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And also, brothers and sisters, I want to say a special shout out. Thank you to our social media team. You guys are awesome. Thank you for helping people navigate our social media platforms. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, use the prayer app. We've got 26 dedicated prayer partners. We just added another one in our church here, 26 of us. And, uh, and we'd love to pray for you and care for you. So whatever you're going through in life, you don't have to go through it alone. So um, by way of introduction, I have heard really dedicated missionaries, you know, wondering sort of, you know, should we be doing missions? Should we be sharing the gospel with other people? Because, you know, if, if we bring the gospel to people and they reject the gospel, then they've rejected Christ and, 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 uh, and then they're in, in, in danger of judgment eternal judgment. Um, and so then the, the question they would ask is then, would we be better off not bringing the gospel? Because then that way, you know, this tribe of people could stand before God and say, well, you know, we never heard the gospel. Take that into consideration. Um, and so, you know, we're going we're gonna to look at that. We're going to address that question today uh, as we look at Matthew chapter 11. Um, so Matthew 11, verses 2 and 3, it says, When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, of the Messiah, of Jesus, he, John the Baptist, sent word by his disciples and said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? Okay, so let's unpack this, because um, these words might seem sort of scandalous. And is, is John the Baptist in danger of denying Jesus as Lord and Savior? So, John the Baptist is in prison. Uh, it would be very natural for him to have doubts, you know. Uh, perhaps he thought he would never be in this situation. You know, after all, he's the one who baptized Jesus. He had encouraged his disciples to follow Jesus. You know, he said, I must decrease, that he would increase. You know, not a lot of preachers today feel that great when church members leave and join another church. Um, John the Baptist certainly preached the full weight of the law. He didn't sugarcoat anything. Um, his own disciples may have been surprised that there was no great rescue plan coming to spring him out of prison. Uh, and I think, you know, if we're honest, uh, like I said, we can also find ourselves, uh, like John, wondering if Jesus is the one. So then let's look at Jesus' response. And um, to, you know, to understand Jesus' response, it's helpful to go back to the prophet Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 35, 1 to 6. Let me read a couple of the verses for you. 
which says, Say to those who have an anxious heart, now listen to this, Be strong, fear not, behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. So then when God comes, now listen, these are the things that are going to happen. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame leap like a deer, the tongue of the mute sing for joy. So four things here. Eyes of the blind opened, ears of the deaf unstopped, lame leaping, tongue of the mute singing for joy. Okay? So, the prophet Isaiah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, when God comes, these miracles happen. Jesus, in his response, is saying what? I am God. I have done this. Okay? Um, and then Jesus also throws in uh, the miracle that he has done, miracles of leprosy. And then we think of the prophet Elisha, uh, 2 Kings 5, saying that only God can heal leprosy. Jesus says, and I've, and I've healed leprosy. So I've done these other four things. On top of that, I've healed leprosy. And also Jesus throws in, he's done the miracle of raising the dead. And Isaiah chapter 26 says that the dead are raised when God comes, right? So Jesus' answer to the disciples of John the Baptist fuses the prophecies regarding the coming of God and the coming of the Messiah into one. How cool is that, right? Pretty cool. So then Jesus says something really kind of interesting. And this gets back to the, the original question and topic we started with. Jesus says in verse 6, Blessed is the one who is not offended because of me. And the word offended, the Greek is scandalizo. So you don't have to be like, you know, a fourth year seminary and to under, oh, scandalizo, that sounds like the English word scandalize. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and what does that mean? Uh, scandalizo means to put a stumbling block or an impediment causing someone to trip or fall. So Jesus is saying something really significant here. Jesus is saying, blessed is the one who does not trip or fall away from God because of me. And so, you know, we should remember, in fact, many people took great offense at Jesus. Uh, Matthew 13 says, coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue, and they took offense. Matthew 15 says, the Pharisees were offended at Jesus' teaching. The exact same word there, scandalizo. Okay? Um, and Jesus will be crucified. Why? Be precisely because people took offense at Jesus claiming to be God. Right? They tore their robes and they spit on him. Jesus did not come into this world to condemn it, but to save it. And so what's the point here? We are blessed eternally if we do not stumble over his offer of salvation through his suffering. And here's the bottom line. This world is in a fallen state. Every one of us is, out, is born outside of a saving relationship with God. The only way you can get into a saving relationship with God is through the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. That, those, that's simply the facts. And so when, to back to the missionary's question, therefore, when we bring the gospel to another tribe, tongue, or nation that has not had it before, and not all of them receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the, those who do not receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are in no worse condition prior, uh, after the, we've gotten there than before we got there. Because we're all, regardless of what tribe or tongue or nation we're born into, we're all born outside of a saving relationship with God. And so, therefore, it behooves each and every one of us who are believers to share the gospel with others, that some might be saved. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, uh, Jesus does not want us to use our Christian freedom to cause others to stumble and turn away. And sometimes Christians can be guilty of that. You know, they, they love the freedom they have, and so then uh, they use it in ways that can cause others to stumble and turn away. Okay, so an example of this, Matthew 17, we read, The collectors of the two drachma tax said to the disciples, Does your teacher, that's Jesus, does your teacher not pay the tax? Jesus says to his disciples, So that you do not give offense, same Greek word, scandalizo, so that you do not give offense to them, go to the sea, cast the hook, take the first fish that comes up. When you open its mouth, you'll find a shekel, that's more than two drachma, Give it to them for us. Okay. So we should not use our freedom that we have as Christians to scandalize those who are weak in the faith or those who are not in the faith. 
And then also notice Jesus' response to John's disciples. Jesus does not criticize John's question, but compliments John's character and ministry. Jesus goes on he, in verse 11, he says, Among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. In my research, I found this quote from Cornelius Lapidy, a 16th century Jesuit. This is what he says about this topic. John the Baptist was sent by God to be Christ's precursor and friend of the bridegroom so that he might show him to the whole world and testify that he is the Messiah and only Son of God. This office and dignity far surpasses all the offices and dignities of the prophets. I just, I love that quote, but I'm a history geek, so what do I know? I want to close with this thought. Jesus points John's disciples and their questions to clear and physical answers. He says to them, tell John what you see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear. John, Jesus points John's disciples to clear physical answers to their questions. And Jesus does the same with the church today. He points us to clear physical answers regarding our questions. So what are those clear physical answers? The sacraments, baptism, communion, the Word of God, right? Clear physical answers to our questions. We, we receive the answers of God's grace, the answers of God's forgiveness, the answers of God's reconciliation, His work drawing us to Him, uh, delivering us to Him, making us stronger, declaring us to be His. He does all of these things in very clear and physical and visible ways that we can see, we can taste, we can even smell if we take the time. We can hold, um, all of our senses can be involved. And we, we can see that God loves us. And that that is his answer to us. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray God's richest blessings upon your day and upon your night. And I look forward to being with you in God's word again real soon. God's blessings. Good night.